Lonzo pairs very well with IQ because they're both shown the ability to get steals so they can harass the other team's backcourt. And then also Lonzo can get rebounds. He can help you out with the rebounds there. And also he shot, what, 38% from three? I know his field goal percentage ain't that great. But if he's able to get open looks, like IQ has helped other te- players on the team get open looks, then I mm-hmm. think we could be cooking with gas right there. Imagine a lineup of IQ, Lonzo, RJ, you know, Obi, and Mitch. To me, that's a that nice like young a core. That's running. Yeah. running and gunning. And then you still got Kevin Knox off the bench. And you still got whoever else you want to draft with these two first round picks in 2021. That's that's an eight man squad right there. That's young. That's energetic. That's gonna get up and down the court. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Are gonna be some players in the pool that we weren't necessarily expecting. And one of those players is actually going to be Lonzo Ball. And you know why? That's the one person who I think the Knicks should go for, because we constantly say, like, what Knicks need is a playmaker. And if Lonzo is anything, he's a playmaker. He's just going to go out there. He's probably not going to take that many shots. He's just going to assist where he needs to, rebound the ball, and play defense. And that's literally what we're missing in a point guard. So if they did go for Lonzo Ball, I wouldn't be mad at it. Whether he's a starter or a backup, I wouldn't be mad at that pickup at all. And then another thing, people are saying how because uh, I posted a video saying that Lonzo Ball didn't necess- didn't get extended by the Pelicans, and a lot of people in the comments were saying, "Oh, why would we want Lonzo? We got IQ." I'm like, so you can only have one person that plays the position. You can't have multiple people. You like. Why yeah. we can't have like, Lonzo and then have IQ on the court as well? Why can't one be the lead guard and the other play off ball? We've already seen yeah. IQ play off ball. We've al- we already know Lonzo can play without the ball and is a facilitator. So why we can't have a lineup that runs like that? Yeah, and why would you only want one legitimate playmaker? Because we, we've shown that we don't have an off-the-bench playmaker. So if, if Lonzo coming means quickly comes off the bench, like, you know what? I'm fine with that because at least we know off the bench we're also having a playmaker. When we start, we have a playmaker. Like we have somebody who's going to keep the offense flowing. Mm-hmm. Lonzo is the one who I'm like definitely go for him um, in off season. Like out of all the restricted free agents that are available now, he's one that we should definitely try to go for. Yeah, and I think Lonzo pairs very well with IQ because they're both shown the ability to get steals, so they can harass the other team's backcourt. And then also Lonzo can get rebounds. He can help you out with the rebounds there. And also, he shot, what, 38% from three? I know his field goal percentage ain't that great. But if he's able to get open looks, like IQ has helped other te- players on the team get open looks, then I mm-hmm. think we could be cooking with gas right there. Imagine a lineup of IQ, Lonzo, RJ, you know, Obi, and Mitch. To me, that's a that nice like young a core. That's running. Yeah. running and gunning. And then you still got Kevin Knox off the bench. And you still got whoever else you want to draft with these two first round picks in 2021. That's that's an eight man squad right there. That's young. That's energetic. That's going to get up and down the court. Are they going to necessarily, are they going to be good enough to contend for the playoffs? Who knows? I'd have to see what the, in the East, yeah, maybe you'd have to see what the other teams do, but that would be a nice foundation to build upon. And that would be another step in the right direction. And I don't think Lonzo going to get that much money. Lonzo probably going to get the same money that Randall got. You just cut Randall because Randall's going to be at the end of his contract. He got that one team option. And then you just flip that into Lonzo's money. And then you still got cash to build out the roster even further if you want to bring, bring in some other veterans and players of those nature of that nature. We, we are set up in a really good position. Um, the only issue that I have been reading reports that um, Pelican and Lonzo are still like interested in having a relationship. I guess they want to see what other teams offer him, and mm-hmm. they're probably prepared to match any offer, um, unless the offer is like a poison high. pill. So, yeah. So my only issue is that if the Knicks are able to sign him to a pretty solid deal, Pelicans are just going to pick it up, and then be tight. Yeah, that's the only thing when it comes to restricted free agency. But you've seen. I think a little bit more, you know, in recent times than we've ever seen before. 
a lot of these restricted free agents aren't necessarily being retained by their teams. Let's look like Boban. Not Boban. What was what it? Bogdan? Bogdan. Yeah, Bogdan. He didn't get retained by the Kings. And also, you have to look at the Pelicans cap situation. They, are, they have Bledsoe. They're going to have to pay Zion in a couple years. They're going to have... They just brought in Kira, another player that's a, a point guard, a young point guard. They got Steven and they Adams. they just maxed Ingram. Yeah, they just, they maxed, just maxed Ingram. Ingram. Steven Adams but, they just remember, paid. They also offloaded um, Drew Holiday, so they have all that they money do. that they would have wasted on well, Holiday. They didn't really offload Drew Holiday because they got it back in terms of Eric Bledsoe's contract. I don't think Drew Holiday and Bledsoe's um, contract is too far off in, com- in terms of numbers. So that no, it, situation. No, it was. It, it was? No, it, okay. it was far off. But with Steven Adams as well, yeah, it's the same. Okay. So, yeah, that's what, no, that's what they did. Um, Holiday, they gave him like five years, 195 mil. Blood's oh, yeah, you're that. right. You're right. You're right. You're right. They maxed him. You're right. So, so Drew Holiday on the max. God bless the Bucks. <laughs> he's a decent yeah, player, but uh, for 200 mil for Drew Holiday. And he's not the answer. I'm surprised that Giannis decided, you know, we got Drew Holiday. Let's. I mean, but it's you know, where mil, he comes bro. From, what are you going to say? No. Yeah, where, where he comes from, <laughs> I get it. Like money wise. Yeah. He could ring chase later. He's only like what, 26? 20, like he could ring chase later. It's exactly. Funny. Like like everybody else does in, <laughs> later on in life. So what or, other players didn't get their contracts extended as well? What other players could the Knicks potentially target? I think Laurie was one of them. Yeah, so um Laurie Markinen, which honestly, me personally, I'm not a fan of us going for him. Um, for the same reasons why the Bulls didn't extend him. He is way too injury prone. Um, and there's been a clear decline in his game, which is why they didn't resign him. Mm-hmm. Um, like his last season and the season before that, he's just been doing bad. And it could be because he's been trying to battle through injury. Um, but whatever the case may be, he's just not looking good. Um, the only way the Knicks should go for him is if we can get him for straight up nothing. Um, just maybe like a one year deal, two year deal, just to test it out um, like we have been doing with other players. But he's not one that you should go for. Um, Jared Allen, that would be a solid pickup um, to play side by side with Mitch. Like when one goes to the bench, the other one comes back. J- Jared Allen, he's going to be um, a restricted free agent. And I don't see the Nets having the money to match any contract for him because they just yeah. paid everybody. Yeah. Everyone. Joe Harris, for who knows? I mean, yeah, they gave him stupid yesterday. money. Like, they gave him stupid he, he, money. He, he was killing yesterday. I didn't, I didn't even get a front. <laughs> the way the Nets just straight up destroyed the Warriors, it's like, oh, there's going to be another season like this where everybody's just beating up on the Warriors for the last five years? Hopefully. Well, the only thing I was worried about that game was James Wiseman because he's on my fantasy team. And he did half decent. He had, like, what, 19 points, six rebounds? He was all right. No, yeah. He was all right. He was he's, the only player I started, too. He ain't a showy player. He's just yeah. someone who's going to give you solid contracts solid minutes solid points rebounds defense which is good i mean because they don't need any more showboating like they've done enough showboat in the last five years they don't need any showy players they just need somebody who's going to be quiet come in ball and leave so they got a good pick with wiseman especially since they're going to be losing a lot yes they are (laughs) even when draymond come back so also i think john collins as well right john collins is also Cause John and Zach Collins. And, uh, the, the Collins bros. <laughs> yeah, because we have a decision to make with Mitch. Mitch, I think we have him under contract for at least two more seasons before we have to make a decision. And we still don't know if he's going to be a legit starter. So maybe Allen or, you know, John Collins could be an option. I would probably say Allen over Collins, me personally. Uh, because with Allen being in Brooklyn, I know he's right. already been able to... Uh, withstand the New York media. We've seen other players come in in a variety of sports and they can't really crack it here. So yeah. to have a player that's already here, he probably already has a house somewhere in the city or in a, or in Westchester or Long Island. It would be an easy move for him and he's already familiar with the city. So if yep. you were going to... Tra- and he's a defender. Yep. And he's a defender. Like, he gets mm-hmm. blocks. So he would basically be a perfect replacement for Mitch if we did make that decision. Yep. So it would pretty much be similar to what we have now with Noel and and um, Mitch, but we would have to bring these players in on reasonable contracts. That's one thing. I don't want to go That's out and, and yeah and spend big money on players because they're restricted free agents. Even though 
to be honest, with them being restricted free agents, that might be something we have to do. Because as you said, you know, the teams can match. Yeah. You just got to, like you said, you got to be aware of the other team's cap space and how close they are to the luxury tax. So with Lonzo, I would look at exactly where the Pelicans are and give them exactly enough. That way, if they were to match, they'd be hitting the luxury tax, knowing that they're not really going to make the playoffs this season. Right. Like, is it worth that kind of nosedive, especially with no fans? Like, do you want to spend that money? Mm-hmm. So, um, and then another, since we're still on um, Pelicans, another restricted free agent is Josh Hart, which would be another solid pickup. Mm-hmm. Um, he He's proven that he can be a starter and he can come off the bench and contribute without that being... Um, diminishing to his ego or anything like that, he can do anything. He's just trying to. He's just trying to ball. Mm-hmm. And the Knicks, we have a lot of guards, but we don't have guards that I would say are, you know, high quality per se. We have guards that are serviceable, you know, like Alfred Payton, DSJ, Frank Nitty. But next year we may be moving on from them, and to bring in a Josh Hart coming up off the bench uh, would be, I think, a nice addition as well. So if we're not going to go after a big, bigger fish like Lonzo. We could still always target someone like a John, uh, I mean, a, Hart, a Josh Hart, to bring him in and let him come off the bench. And what are your thoughts on another available shooting guard, uh, Malik Monk? I like Malik Monk coming out of college, uh, but you know he can be hard headed sometimes. Like he do some bone headed stuff. Like he fits into that Mitch mode. Like he be on the court doing some. Like, what are you doing, bro? Thank God you ain't on my team. <laughs> but he's athletic. He has the ability to score at times, you know. He's a decent player. I really don't mind. I, I like Bridges more than I like Monk, to be honest with you. But, but Bridges oh, yeah. isn't going to be part. available, yeah. <laughs> but if Monk is available, they've already been, like, some rumblings that Monk was a, attached to the Knicks. I think it was right around either the draft or, or... I think when he got drafted, I think the Knicks were targeting him. They were saying we might end up going with him, but we didn't, and he ended up going to the Hornets, but... And then he was upset. He was saying he's going to prove that the Knicks should have taken him. Yeah. No, you're not. No, you didn't. (laughs) You played subpar basketball all years that you played in the league. Yeah, he would be a... I think he would be like a reclamation project almost. You bring him in, you'd have your coaching staff work with him, and then you would try to see what he would become. He wouldn't be a big, uh, big money free agent signing, but he would be somebody that you would add to the bench, come off the bench, and see what he can contribute. Yeah, he would be someone I would rather wait for him to be an unrestricted free agent. I'm not trying to battle no team for him. Um, I'm not going to negotiate with him. I'm like, listen, you want to come here? Here's five mil. Let's see what you could do one let's, year. Let's keep it a buck. I don't think the Hornets are going to be doing much matching. They just gave Gordon Hayward 120, and he broke his figure. <laughs> Yo, like and you know what? I'm glad. Like they deserve that because what are you doing? <laughs> like he's one of he's one of three players that got max deals for the past. Well, like, I, don't, I don't think at least ten years. I don't think but it was a max is, per se. It was a crazy number, but I don't think it was a max. Not for him, it was a max because he's it not was? eligible for a super max. Yeah, they uh-huh. gave him a max deal. That's so crazy. This is his third max deal. The only other players who got that is LeBron and KD. So you saying he's a part of that too? Well, I yeah. know they, I know they said over thirty mil a year. I think him and KD, but I don't know if it was uh, exact. I don't know what the max is for for play because he has what ten years in the league. So when you have a certain amount of years in the league, you get you're allowed to to get a certain type of max. So you get a little bit more, like an eight percent bump per year or something crazy like that. That's why you see certain players like LeBron, Kate, well LeBron and them get slightly higher maxes because as you get more years in the league, you get access to a higher max. But yeah, that's crazy. Oh, yeah. To be giving him 30 mil is wild. God bless him. And and he's staying there. He's and I'm, I was one of the people who was like, wait, why is he declining his 34 mil option? He ain't getting that Bro. nowhere. And then he goes and get. I'm like, yo, who and is his agent because players need to go to him? Facts. Like, whoever, whoever his agent is, players... Go to find out Gordon Hayward's agent. That needs to be your agent. Yep, he's, he's a doing master his job. finesse. <laughs> master Absolutely. finesse. He swindled the Celtics, then he left, and then he now swindled the, the Hornets. He's out of control. If you're on the East Coast, <laughs> beware. We got a swindler on the East Coast. Beware. <laughs> yeah, now if I'm telling you, if I, if I was in the A, I'd be like, yo, Gordon, who is your agent? Because I need a new agent. Like, what? 120, 120 mil for a clearly injury-prone player. 
a player who cannot make a difference that big that he's not the player you sign and oh we're finally making the playoffs we're good no and you want to hear somebody the worst who's part? probably what Worst part is, at some point, they were saying the Knicks were in negotiations. I was like, what? We were in negotiations for what? Not no 30 mil. I don't care if it's 30 mil one year. Get get out of here with that. What? I was like, the Knicks are in negotiations. And when I saw that contract, I said, yo, we got to call. We got to call up Dolan. We got to call up Mill. No, Mills ain't there anymore. We got to call up everybody in the front office. Because right now, y'all are set tripping. If you really think you should be in a calling Gordon Haywood for any type of uh, 30 some odd multi-year deal. Because when they when they linked the Knicks to Haywood originally, it's supposed to be a salary dump. The Knicks were going to get that one year and some picks. Yeah. And I was like, yo, that's cool. Now he a free agent and you're negotiating with him. Why? <laughs> Why? There's no need for that. Because he, he's like, not that player. He's not the game changer. You can put him on any team and he's not making a difference to none of those teams. Mm-hmm. And that got me a little bit nervous. The fact that this front office was legitimately in conversations with Hayward. And I'm like, whoa, imagine what we're going to do next free agent. I thought we were going to take it slow and steady. There's no slow and steady with Gordon Hayward. He's he's hey. he's in his 30s, right? I think he's like 32. How old is Gordon Hayward? Yeah, he's like 32. 32, 33 or something like that. So he's on the decline, not only because of his age, but also because of his injuries. So why would the Knicks be, you know, in contract talks with Gordon Hayward when we have a young team. He's 30. 30, okay, so we gave him a couple extra years. Well, to be That's honest, the like injuries you. gave him a couple extra years. Yeah, it broke your finger. You think you're Kobe? You better <laughs> wrap that up and play. Facts. For 120 like, mil, yeah. Yeah, if I'm yeah. doing it, I'm like, Yo, you wrapping that up and you playing. I don't care, son. Play through that joint. Factual. That's bad. Uh-huh.